ghosts really love to interact with humans. Some have good intentions, others not so much. We'll be exploring both here tonight. Be sure to drop by every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central for new content. The great gods of YouTube will grant your every wish if you do. Really. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way. And let's get scared together, 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 together. When I was five years old, my parents and I lived with my grandfather in Iowa. It was a pretty big house, a manor actually. It had been in the family for a long time and was located on the outskirts of town near a forest. One day I was walking around the house just following my mom when I heard laughter coming from the basement. My mom had forbidden me from going down there alone, allegedly because it was so big and filled with piles of junk. So I waited for my mom to leave the room, and I sneaked down there. I looked around for the source of the laughter, and I saw a little girl. She was black, around seven years old, and dressed in really dirty, old-looking clothes. Not just old as in tattered, but old as in from another era. The moment we locked eyes, she ran off, scared. I searched for her, but I couldn't find her. As I was about to leave, a ball came rolling out of the darkness towards me. Well, that freaked me out and I ran back upstairs. But a couple of days later, I went down again and I took some toys with me. In my five-year-old mind, I thought, if there's a little girl in my basement, she must be bored and lonely, so I wanted to share my toys. I put them on the floor where I had last seen her, and when I went back a few days later, the toys had been moved. I called out, Hello? I'm glad you like the toys. You can come out. I won't hurt you. About 30 seconds later, she walked out from behind a mountain of furniture and boxes. I asked her her name, but she said she didn't have one. I then asked her why she was in the basement and didn't come upstairs. She said her parents didn't want her to because they were afraid of the people who lived upstairs. I told her that I lived upstairs too, and the only person up there that was scary was my mom, and she wasn't even that bad. I asked if I could meet her parents. She said they were a little afraid of people, but to wait a minute and she'd go ask. She was gone for quite a while, and I got tired of waiting, so I went to look for her. I walked further into the basement, and I saw what looked like holding cells. There was a black lady chained to the ground, and a black man who was missing an eye and a good portion of his face. The woman's legs were crushed. In fact, she looked crushed from the waist down, and the man looked like someone took a knife and went to town on his face and eye. I was really scared and started crying for my mom. She came flying down the stairs, grabbed me and asked me what was wrong, but I was crying so hard I couldn't say anything. She took me upstairs and, after I calmed down, I asked her why there were people chained up in the basement. Mom got really mad at me, and she denied that there was anything at all in the basement other than a bunch of junk and a washer-dryer. But from that day forward, she locked that door and kept the key with her always. I think my mom had psychic abilities and knew full well what was in the basement. But mom was very close-minded about anything outside of the norm, so she kept denying it to herself and others. My dad was always checked out with drugs and alcohol, so he didn't have much to say on the subject. My grandfather, however, laughed and said, I see him at the people in the basement. He told me that he used to see them as a kid too, and he used to play with the little girl. He told me the ghost family used to work at the house. That was how I found out that my great-grandfather was a slave owner. Slavery was legal in Iowa until 1860, and from what I heard, my great-grandfather was not very nice to his slaves. He didn't see them as people, but as tools to be used for whatever purposes he chose. He was married with two daughters, but he would regularly force himself on the female slaves 
and beat them and the male slaves and children for any reason at all. If he were having a bad day, he'd take it out on them, and sometimes he'd even kill them. I was told a story about one female slave that became pregnant by him, and to hide that fact, he killed her and the unborn child. I was never allowed to go back in the basement again, but sometimes at night, I'd hear crying coming up through the vents, and I'd try to talk to whoever it was, but they never replied. I don't think they even knew that they were dead. That house is no longer standing. The land was sold to a developer, and a Walmart now stands where it used to be. I often wonder what happened to the spirits that lived in the basement, and I do hope that they eventually found peace. This is the most terrifying thing that I've ever experienced. Back when I was eight or nine, my brother and I used to sleep over at my grandma's a lot. My brother hogged the back bedroom for himself, even though it was supposed to be for the both of us. I think he kicked me out because that was the bedroom that had the video games. So this left me to sleep on the couch in the living room. I was afraid of every single room in that house, and I refused to be there alone especially if I were in the back of the house, where they didn't have many lights. So just imagine how well I fared in a dark living room at night, all alone. Spoiler alert, not well. Even though I wasn't supposed to, I would stay up every night watching TV, often into the early morning hours, just so I could have the light and the sound coming from the TV to calm my nerves. Now, Grandma's house had a resident ghost, she told me many times that it was very friendly, but it sure scared the crap out of me a few times. One particular time, though, will stick with me forever. The night started off like any other. My brother locked himself in the back bedroom to play video games, and Grandma was tucked in bed, so that left me alone in the dark living room. I waited for Grandma to fall asleep before turning the TV on, and I kept the volume very low so I could barely hear it. I didn't want Grandma waking up and punishing me. Grandma's house was really old, and the doors were all made of particle board, and the back bedroom door was pretty much destroyed by my older cousin, so every time that door was opened, it made a really loud sound. The time passed rather quickly, and before I knew it, it was two in the morning, and that's when it happened. I remember feeling it and hearing it long before anything else. You know when you're alone and you suddenly get a chill up your spine and your brain tells you you're not alone anymore? Well, I felt that. And I heard a sound. For me, it sounded like a mixture of TV static and the ringing you get in your ears when the room is too quiet. It was soft at first, coming from the end of the hall. I turned the TV volume even lower, just in case my grandma had woken up and was coming out to scold me. Then I heard the sound of footsteps coming from the bathroom at the end of the hall. I remember trying to figure out who it was, grandma or my brother. But my heart was pounding and my fight-or-flight instincts were kicking in, though I calmed down a little bit, telling myself it was probably just my brother trying to scare me. Until I realized that if it was my brother, I would have heard that back bedroom door open, and I hadn't. Remember, that back bedroom door made a terrible sound every time it was opened, making it pretty hard to sneak up on me. That is when the panic officially set in, and whatever was making that noise began moving towards me. When the static ringing got louder, I felt a presence at the end of the hall, I couldn't move. I was so scared I'd just lay there waiting to see it. Sitting there in the dark, I saw a shadow man looming at the end of the couch. I covered up my head with the blankets. Then I suddenly remembered something my grandmother always told me to do if I saw a spirit. She said, Just tell them you're fine and that they can go home. They aren't there to hurt you. They just want to check up on you. So after chanting, I'm fine, go home. I'm fine, go home. From underneath the blankets? 
the ringing sound stopped and the presence left. I remember peeking out from under the blankets after about five minutes of silence and seeing just a dark hallway. I wasted no time in running right into my grandmother's room. But even after all that, I still slept on the couch in the living room alone. This wasn't my first nor was it my last paranormal experience, but it was certainly the one I'll remember for the rest of my life. It was really creepy, but I'm sure whoever it was really was just checking up on me. So I guess what I want to say here last is if you ever encounter one like me, a nice spirit, just tell it that you're fine and they can go home. It's probably checking up on you to see if you're okay, even if it is spooky as hell. In 2010, I took a job in India that involved a two-hour commute there and back from the office. The company I worked for provided a ride-sharing service for my colleagues and myself on a daily basis. I really liked talking to my colleagues during the drive, but one of them, a noob, was a very quiet type. He always wore a lot of rings with gemstones, and one day I asked him about them. He just smiled and said nothing. But his childhood friend worked and commuted with us, and he told me the story, with a noob's blessing. They were both from the same small village in India, and one day as children, they sneaked off to some ruins that were said to be haunted by robbers that were killed by the police. The spirits are said to still roam the place, but the boys didn't believe that. They thought the stories were made up, so they went there and played hide-and-seek. After a while, a noob started feeling sick, so they went back home. Over the coming days, a noob's condition worsened, and he was running a very high fever. The doctors didn't know the reason for the fever, nor could they break it. On the second day, he started asking to eat raw meat. He and his entire family are staunch vegetarian Hindus. They don't even eat eggs, let alone uncooked meat. The next day, he began speaking in many different voices and saying some terrible things, things that were totally out of character for him or for any child his age. He was making rude sexual comments to the girls and women in his own family and asking for alcohol to drink. When they found out that he had been in the haunted ruins when he got sick, his family called a few exorcists, but there was nothing they could do either. Finally, they found one who could help, and they took their son to his ashram in the forest. While the exorcist was praying, a noop began levitating and moving things around through telekinesis. He was throwing large rocks and tree branches around, using just his mind. His friend told me it took five hours of hard work to exorcise six ghosts from his body. Then it took him over a month to recuperate from the effects. Since then, on the advice of the exorcist, Anoop always wore those rings as protective amulets. Once he finished telling the tale, all of us fell silent in the car, absorbed in our own thoughts. Anoop was okay with the fact that his friend told us, but he himself refused to ever relate the story from his own mouth, for fear that it might start up again and draw the ghosts back to him. After that, I never questioned Anoop again. We moved to a new house a few months ago. As we were in the process of purchasing the house, the renter that lived there died of natural causes, right in the middle of the living room. Shortly after we moved in, our two-year-old daughter started talking about the ghost that lives in the house. Now she's two years old, and Halloween had recently passed. She had a picture book that she loved to read that was focused on Halloween, so I thought it was entirely possible that all this talk of ghosts came from that book. Still, she was always telling me that the ghost was in her playhouse in the basement, or on the stairs, or standing over there in the corner. She never seemed afraid of it and considered it a friend, so I really wasn't that concerned. 
Even if there was a ghost haunting our house, as long as it was friendly, it could stay. I would often say out loud to the ghost that he was welcome to stay if he wanted to, but he was also welcome to leave if that would make him happier. I was about 30-70 on believing that the ghost was real versus that it was just her imagination. That is, until one morning on our way to daycare. It was still dark and rainy, and my daughter told me that the ghost was on the back deck waving goodbye, and that today was his birthday, so she wanted us to sing happy birthday to him. Once again, I mostly ignored what she was saying, because she is birthday obsessed. In the past, she made us sing happy birthday to Mickey Mouse, a bowl of fruit, and the bathroom. So, yeah. Anyway, we sang and wished the ghost a happy birthday and went on with our day. Later that afternoon, out of sheer curiosity, I looked up the obituary of the man who had died in our house. And wouldn't you know it, it was his birthday. All my neighbors think our apartment building is haunted. One day, my downstairs neighbor and his wife went away for about a week. Two days after they left, I told my other neighbor that there was a weird noise and vibration coming from the apartment below me. I was kind of freaked out and it kept me from sleeping, because we knew they were both gone and couldn't imagine what was making that noise. Then, the day before they came home, it suddenly stopped. Being both curious and nosy, we went over to our neighbors and asked them what was making that noise. They didn't know, so we went through the apartment and tried everything to recreate that sound, and eventually the ceiling fan got turned on. I said, that's it, that's the noise, you left the ceiling fan on. The husband's eyes got really wide and he said, no, we've never turned that fan on, ever. Well, that was true. I had never heard that noise in all the years they'd lived beneath me. My other neighbor was there and she said, I heard it too at my place. That's the noise. So those poor people didn't sleep for about three days, afraid that their bedroom was being haunted. The husband would stay awake at night, just staring at that ceiling fan, terrified, afraid that suddenly a ghost would appear and turn it on. He finally called up their adult son, telling him about the weird paranormal things that were happening in the apartment. His son started laughing and he said, Dad, when you were gone, I needed a monitor for my computer, so I went over to your place to borrow the one that you keep in the bedroom. It was so hot in there I turned the fan on, and when I was done with the project a few days later, I brought it back, and I saw that I accidentally left the ceiling fan on. So I turned it off. Mystery solved. I'd like to thank you all so much for listening. Whether you've been with me from the very beginning, or if today is your first time on the channel, you're all a part of my family of darkness, and it's my pleasure to entertain you every week. Now click on the screen above to hear more stories so you can stay scared until we meet again, my friends.